Hey Danny, how you doing, man? Hello, Lewis. How are you? <laughs> I'm okay, thank you. Hey, hey, sweetie, how you doing? Hi. I see. Hi there. How are you doing? Hi. Oh, that's good. Hi, 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 Chloe. How you doing? Hi, hon. I'm alright, thanks. Are you? I'm, I'm alright. I'm alright. Yep. That's good. I really like these these nice awkward stilted conversations. <laughs> they bring me joy. Welcome <laughs> to episode thirty eight. This will be, won't it? Void number thirty eight. Yeah. Fucking hell. Danny, getting... we've done thirty eight of these. I know. I know. It's it's shocking. Shocking. I mean, it's like people are still listening, which is good. You know. Yeah. Yeah, somehow, somehow, people are still listening. Yeah. Wouldn't be doing it if they weren't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean that that is that is kind of true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, have we got some stuff prepared for the bullshit? Do you need to spin the wheel? I'll spin. I'll spin the wheel. <clears throat> oh, way! Listen to that. Oh, okay. What I've got here is: Would I lie to you? Uh, uh, I don't know. Would you lie to me? Oh, most definitely. I lie to you quite often. <laughs> um. <laughs> it's the basis of our friendship is yeah. that we lie to each other. Yeah. The, the ten minutes that I asked you for, I was, uh, I was uh, uh, making glass with sand. You know, I was just finishing that off. <laughs> Flamethrower on some what sand. Can I do? Classic glass. What can I do that's really pointless that will waste everyone's time? <laughs> <laughs> before I do the podcast, but um, yeah, would I lie to you? It's a great show. Uh, it is, and I thought what would be good is if both of us and Chloe, if she has one prepared, uh, could give a statement, and then both or triple sides. I don't triple sides would <laughs> <to> dissect <laughs> the statement, and it be be a bit of a bit of a laugh. So yeah, yeah cool, yeah. Well, how are we going to decide who goes first? Well, you're uh, in the. You're going first. There you go. Decided. Okay, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Decided. <laughs> Done. <laughs> okay. Um. <clears throat> I have met Arnold Schwarzenegger no fewer than twice. <laughs> okay. Okay. When was the first time you met him? The first time was at a comic con. He was there to promote, like, the new Terminator film, which I think was Dark Fate at the... No, it would have been before that. The one with Amelia Clark in it. Whatever G- that was Gen- called. Genesis? Very good, but... Genesis, yeah. He was there to promote that, and I was at a Comic-Con, and I was thinking, okay, cool, this is fine. Um, and then he came past, and it was on his way up to the stage, and I was like, oh my god, hi, oh my god! And he sort of looked at me and sort of went, hi, and sort of waved, and walked he, past he up said, onto the stage. He said it exactly like, like that, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, he said it exactly like that. Hi. No hint of an Austrian accent. Hi. <laughs> and um, yeah, no, I, would, I should point out he was—he did not single me out in the crowd and say, "You boy from the Midlands, <laughs> hello." No, no, he was, he was sort of walking past a, a big sort of crowd of people who'd come to watch him do this Q and A panel-y type thing for, for the, to promote to promote thingy Terminator film. Yeah, and um, he sort of was waving as he went past, and I was like, "Hi," and he was sort of. Like he heard a hi, sort of turned to the crowd and went, hi, but yeah. Yep. Okay, when, when was the second time? The second time was later that day. I, uh, oh, that's... I was still there. <laughs> Wait a minute. I was still at the... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. <laughs> I thought you were going to talk. Yeah, I met him twice. Uh, I saw him walking. And then I, I, later on, a couple of hours after, I saw him walking again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you um, did you I speak mean, to him? Uh, well, uh, sort of. The time later in the day, we were my, uh, the person I was with. We we were walking out of the the sort of convention center. We were going to go and get some lunch, and um, we we decided to take this other exit that seemed a bit less busy than the others. And um, we walked past, and we had to walk past the stage at which he was doing this panel uh-huh. in order to get out. It's like it's, it's hungry. It's lunchtime. Let's just get out and get some food. Yeah. So we walked past the the stage at the same time that he was coming, like sort of around the sort of backing bit to go da- back to a I don't know, like a green room or whatever that they've got upstairs, behind the scenes, downstairs in the basement, wherever they keep Arnold Schwarzenegger when he's not <laughs> working. Right. Um, <laughs> wherever they keep him there. Right. But yeah, I sort of walked past and I was like, oh hi, I, I really like your films, and he was like, 
okay. And sort of just kept going. He just said... So there was he more s- interaction on the second time. He said, okay. Well, it was sort of like a, hi, thank you. And then just kept sort of going. Well, 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 Lewis, Lewis, this is too vague for me. He's saying, okay. Then he's saying, ah, hi, thank you. <laughs> what did he say? What were the words... <laughs> Did he not he make, said, did he not say you, words and smiled and kept walking? Did he grunt? <laughs> did he just go? <laughs> he went, ah! And they kept walking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So he said thank you. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Okay, Chloe, do you have any questions for this watertight story? I mean, my problem with this is that Chloe knows all the intimate details of my life from birth to present day. So yeah, I, yeah. I feel like you can't comment on this. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Um, and when was this? How many years ago? Uh, two, three years ago. I'm not sure. Whenever Genesis came out, right? When did that come out? Gen. Oh Jesus, Genesis. They spelled it stupidly. Yeah, they spelled it well. Why? Genesis. Fucking cretins. 2015. That came out. So yeah, shortly after that came out. Wow. That was. Because it came out. Yeah, yeah. It came out in June, and Comic Cons they're normally sort of summertime, aren't they? So like, yeah, it must have been a Comic Con about 2015. Yeah, I, I like don't... MCM, that's normally sort of June time. Right. Like Manchester Comic Con. Right, okay. Okay. Um Well that's I know because every every year we, we, we when we every year when I was young we used to film Four O'clock Club in Manchester and there'd always be a bus saying, Comic Con, this Saturday and Sunday, come down come on down, ha 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 And I'd be like, Oh yeah, I'll have to and then I would always forget. But this year I made the explicit thing, I was like, Right, no, I love Terminator, I am going to this Comic Con and it, it paid off. Okay, that that that's that sounds plausible. Um, so you, you did it during four o'clock club then? Uh, yeah, I suppose it would have been. Hmm. And you didn't say anything. Or it might have been slightly before actually, because. Oh right. Uh... No, yeah, it would have been. No, no, no. Hang on. Yeah, it would have been before because what's the? Yeah, because he would have been promoting the film before it came out. Because if he did it after the film came out, then people would just stand there in the audience and heckle him and go, "Terminator Genesis was shit." Yeah, <laughs> that, that that so as he must have done it before the film came out. So yeah, it would be, I don't know, probably May, early June sort of time. Okay, okay, um, okay. I'm I'm gonna say uh, that that is uh, a big rotting lie. You would be correct. It is a yeah! How could you tell from my from my incredible lack of preparation? <laughs> my first grab at somebody who might be at a comic con. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger from Terminator <laughs> Genesis. Shit! It wasn't. It, I couldn't. I couldn't honestly tell. It was just a fifty-fifty thing. It was. You know. I couldn't actually. <laughs> you, you you did it pretty convincingly, but I was just like, uh, it's a chance to either be positive or negative. So. I'm going to be negative. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I not surprised? Yeah. Because you know oh, me. Right. Have you got a statement then for Chloe and I to aggressively cross-question you? I, I do, yes. Um, <clears throat> I have taken a piss next to Danny Dyer. I see. I mean, I feel like that's quite likely, to be honest. Where? Yeah, where? At the, at the Soap Awards. When I went... Have you been to the Soap Awards? I have. Is this just, oh, is this just a way for you to say that I was nominated? <laughs> I, wa- I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't nominated, but I was invited. I see, I see. So, what was the... What, what, what award were you nominated for? You just said he wasn't nominated. I wasn't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was... My own forgetfulness will be your greatest weapon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't Danny Dyer, Lewis. I was. It was Angelina Jolie the entire time. <laughs> was it? I forgot. But yeah, Chloe's right though. What year is this? Uh, two thousand and eighteen. Two thousand and eighteen. Okay. Um. Why? Why was Danny Dyer there? Had he been nominated or? Yeah, because he's in. He's in his. I know he's in his standards. Yeah, but what? Yep. What was he nominated for? Uh, the whole cast goes, not just people that yeah, that's true. Oh, really? I I don't yeah. I don't know if he was even nominated, but the, the Chloe's right. The whole cast go to these things. Okay, so why why were you there? Because I was in Doctors. A likely story. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 the only serious credit I have. Okay. 
The rest is just the rest is just fucking rapping, okay? Okay, so so how how did this situation go down? Well, um I went into the toilet and uh <laughs> I went to the urinal <laughs> and and Danny and Danny Dyer came in and uh, he was at the urinal next to me, and and uh, I uh, we 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 pissed. Were there any other people in the bathroom, or, or, or I think, was it just you two? I think there was a guy. Was it a very intimate affair with just you and Danny Dyer? Yeah, he. You chose to stand right next to him at the the urinal. Yeah, he'd cordoned well, if off. Danny was there first, then Danny Dyer came in he'd... afterwards and chose the one next to him. Oh yeah. He'd cordoned off the male toilet. So it was just literally me. <laughs> He'd said, no, right, 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 while me and this chap are in here, no one else is allowed in. This is a very <laughs> intimate situation, all right? I don't know if that's how he talks, but it's that sort of generic sort of Cockney accent. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, let me think about this for a second. Was there any conversation? Yeah. It was sort of, a, you know that way where you just sort of go, and you sort of nod your head, as if to... Man without thing, with yeah. the man thing yeah let's no no because i don't want to that's just fucking weird <laughs> you know that way where you sort of like say all right without saying all right uh, all right mm. yeah mm. like that mm. 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 yeah i know what you mean yeah um, it was like that because i didn't want i didn't want to go how oh many, my God, how many other you, if if you came in if you were there already pissing at your urinal mm-hmm. and then danny dyer came in Mm. Why did he choose to stand directly next to you? Were there other urinals available? I didn't. Well, yeah, that's a that's a good point. Um, maybe I don't. It's almost as though this is a story constructed out of something. It wasn't. It wasn't like the 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 very next urinal, like next to me. It was like maybe I think it was one down. He went. Ah, okay. The, the, that's the rule, isn't it? Try and leave a barrier of one between you and the next person. Men's bathroom yeah. Blow my mind. Like, mm. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't like come right up beside me and like just <laughs> loom over me <laughs> as I was pissing. Yeah, there was. <laughs> what? I think there was like, what? I think there was one space, if I remember. Okay. 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 So, uh, at what point during the evening was this? Was it like right at the start, or like had people it, had like a bit of a drink and? It was right uh, at the start, but everyone had been drinking okay. by that point. Because uh, it's a funny story. I brought my mate uh, Russell with me, um, mm. and Russell's <laughs> Russell when he gets uh, drunk can be quite uh, eccentric, shall we say? And uh, he <laughs> right? he'd been tanning wines like they were fucking smints, I tell you. And uh, there was, do you know? Have you ever watched Hollyoaks? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you know Tony from Hollyoaks? Yeah, well, Russell, like, when I came out of the, the toilet, Russell was talking to him, and Russell had no idea who he was, and he was like, so are you, are you coming in ways, aye? Are you, are you following us? Just this, <laughs> it was absolutely out of his face, and this, Tony's, like, laughing, it's like, your mate's really funny, he doesn't, he doesn't have an idea who I am, I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry about that, and I'm, like, trying to <laughs> lead him away before he says anything else, um, um, I, I have a question, and please don't be offended by this, Danny. Go on. I would imagine that Danny Dyer gets recognised more in the street than you do. Yeah. But yeah so yes, obviously. Is the, Yeah, but is there a se- why would they not have a separate bathroom for <laughs> super famous people? He was a cast member. Okay, I wasn't... Yeah, yeah, he was. I wasn't, well, so I was, was this a cast member bathroom? Like, hey, no, no. It was, well. it was the reception, right? And then you sort of walk out, and you go like, like, uh, to like a different building, where it's like a sort of small like arena, and you walk out, and there's like people behind fences, and they're like cheering. Uh, some guy, some guy was 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 there that knew me apparently. Like there was because we got like oh it's a, it's a, it sounds dead fancy. Like my pal Russell was like. Uh, Absolutely, he was like, "This is the best day of my life." He's like, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> we we got in this car. It wasn't. It was no. It wasn't a limo. It was a. It was a really nice black car, and and we we came in, and then I got out, and Russell got out, and uh, this guy shouted, um, from behind the sort of barrier, and he was like, 
Danny, Danny, Danny. And I turned around and saw this guy. He was like, come here. Can I get a picture? Can I get a picture? And I was like, oh, I didn't, didn't know many people watched uh, me on, on <laughs> Doctors. And and then I walked over and he got, a, he got a picture with me. Didn't say what he knew me from. He just apparently apparently knew me. And then we I walked see. in. And then the reception is that there isn't like separate stuff for anyone. It's just everyone's in the same bit. So... Uh, so, so I mean, this is a question more out of my ignorance than 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 about the event. At, at the Soap Awards, do they invite like sort of general public you in, into? Tickets. You can buy tickets, like you can. Okay, so there's a chance that any rando off the street could be stood next to like Philip Schofield or whatever. No, no, the, you oh, can. No, because he's not a soap guy, is he? Um, I don't know. You can somebody from Hollyoaks. You can buy tickets, but you would be in like a separate sort of um, part of the auditorium. Like the, 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 oh okay. The, the the members of the of the public that had bought tickets weren't in the reception with the, the the people who were nominated and the cast members and stuff like that. I see. So 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 you because you were a cast member, you were, you had access to the the VIP Dying extreme high class Danny Dyer toilets. Yeah, I they, they 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 sent me down. They sent me down the red carpet and everything. I was like, I I'd been on it for two months, maybe if that. And they said, do you want to come to the Soap Awards? And I was like, fucking yes. <laughs> <laughs> who, do, who do you want me to kill? Well, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Get but, me in that room. <laughs> yeah, but it was not, it was, uh, it was, that's, that's how, it, that's how it all shaked out. Um, I see. What are you thinking, baby? Truth or lie? Uh, see, this is really difficult. I think, See, I think there is going to be like an element of truth to it. I think he peed next to somebody. Mm-hmm. I don't think it was Danny Dyer. No, I feel like yeah, him going to the soap awards, peeing next to some guy that maybe maybe the guy looked a bit like Danny Dyer. And was like, was like, oh no, it's not. No, like, I, I'm not saying that like it's just a random person. It was it was probably someone like from a soap that is recognisable. Yeah, yeah. But he didn't want to say that it was that person. So maybe it was Danny um. Oh, what's his name? Ken from Coronation Street. Maybe it's him. William Roach. Did you piss next to William Roach, Danny? I didn't piss next to William Roach. No, I didn't. Oh, can you can you work on that for me, please? Can we make that happen? <laughs> can... can we get in touch with Bill Roach and see if we can make that happen? Is it is it William William Roach? Is that I have his no name? Idea. What you you just said a full name as if you knew who he was? Oh no, yeah, Did William you just... Roach. I'm right. sure it's William Roach. <laughs> I you I just pulled William that name <laughs> out of your ass. Bill or Will or would, like. Or Willie? Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've yeah. just... I've if you just go by Willie, it makes a story. It's a bit yeah. more better. It's better for the story. Anyway, I think... <laughs> Willie, I'm a big fan. <laughs> My truth-based pal... lie. I'm going to go with truth-based lie as well. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. What, 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 the fu- what the fuck's this middle ground that you've suddenly sprouted <laughs> up? It's either a truth or a lie. You can't have both. Okay. Yeah, so saying it's a lie. Okay, yeah, lie. Based on true events. Yeah, a lie that's got a kernel of truth in no, it. No, stop, stop with your additives. <laughs> is, that, is it true? Lie, it's a lie! It's a lie! Fuck. Okay, okay, I can tell you, it's a lie. Hey, there we go. How how much of it is true? It was it was Russell that pissed next to Danny Dyer. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, lie with a kernel of truth. Yeah, it's like a truth-based lie. Yeah, was but, William Roach there, out of curiosity? I don't fucking know. I don't watch. I don't. I don't, I don't watch Coronation Street. Um, I don't. I don't really. I only watch Doctors because I was in it. To be honest. <laughs> I see. Well, I quite enjoyed that. We'll have to make that a semi-regular thing. Yeah. Luckily, my life's pretty boring. <laughs> so, so <laughs> I once ate a a, a, a cornetto. Well, you could have. That yeah, leads us just... very graciously. Yes, it does. Into today's podcast. Which is the uh, the third and final film in the Cornetto trilogy, but the second in our trilogy of podcasts about the Cornetto trilogy. Yeah, we've really we've really made it easy on ourselves. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, today we are talking about the film The World's End. Danny, you want to take the mic, bud? Yeah, uh, it was how? it was written by Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg. Right. It was directed by Edgar Wright, and it's starring Simon Pegg, Nick Frost. Martin Freeman, Rosamund Pike, and Paddy Con... Conci- Considine? Considine? Considine, yeah. Considine. There you go. Uh, opening statements? Uh, yes. 
While it isn't the best court film that the Cornetto trilogy has to offer, I'm a big fan of this one. It tells the tale of a troubled man and his adventures in the world with a bizarre, rare kind of elegance. And there are a huge number of lines and exchanges in this film that I really enjoy. One of me faves! Right. Uh, Chloe, do you have one? Do I have it? I mean, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> Yeah, 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 because no, we, uh, we, we planned you coming on here weeks in advance, yeah, <laughs> and you're like, I, I, I don't have time, I don't have time to prepare! No, I don't, that's why I sit here and make shit up. Right, okay. Um, not as good as Hot Fuzz, but I do thoroughly enjoy it, and I enjoy that it's such a roller coaster. Mm. Life is a roller coaster. Oh my god. Just gotta ride it. Anyway, what's your opening <laughs> statement, Dan? <laughs> um... Uh, a charming, sometimes depressing, and wacky story about growing up and taking control of one's life. Fuck off, you big lamp! Oh, that's really good. Fuck off, you big lamp! There you go. I fucking know what I fucking said! <laughs> oh. uh, creepy room uh, questions. Who wants to... Who oh, wants I to... have many creepy room statements, a few cute creepy room questions. Go on, you kick us off, Dan. All right, okay, okay. Um, is this film endorsing a bizarre form of libertarianism. <laughs> um, I, I say... <laughs> we want to be free to do what we want to do, get loaded, have a good time. I, I suppose, maybe. I, it's not a serious question. I was only joking. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I doubt that, that that's what they were going for, <laughs> to be honest. Right, I want to make a movie about libertarianism. Uh, <laughs> Um, I want to make a movie about libertarianism, but make it the weirdest possible movie about libertarianism that you could possibly make. Exactly. Um, it's always pubs. Any thoughts on that? Why that's why? Why it's always pubs? I suppose it's, it's sort of yeah. It's a very it's a very cornerstone of the British identity. I think. Do you think? I it's, think a, it's a very like it's. Do you think it's a criticism of of that sort of lifestyle, or do you think um, it's more of a recognition that that's just what we what we do? I think probably more of a recognition because it's what happens like like for example in Shaun of the Dead what happens in the pub like all the important things that happen in the story happen in the pub in a way yeah like it's it's sort of a re- that film I think at least is a recognition of the, the pub lifestyle as it were I think um in Hot Fuzz in the end he enjoys going to the pub with yeah. with um Const- Constable Butterman Danny and like in this film I suppose it's kind of it is about alcoholism in a way. It's about yeah, we're having like like he's not just addicted to the alcohol; he's addicted to having a nice time yeah. with his friends. And the, there's that brief thing about um, well, you're back on the horse, so like he was on heroin or whatever. So do you know what I mean? That just it's yeah. He he's got an addictive personality. I think it's a criticism of his addictive personality more than it's a criticism of pubs. I mean, even though that. Libertarianism isn't in, in it. There is like some like elements of like, philosophy in it, you know, about like optimism and sort yeah. of, you know, uh, which is, I I think it's I would say it's maybe the most mature of the three films because it's yeah I think so too you know because I think that the the alien invasion is a great sort of like existential sort of nightmare for gary as a character because the world is like rapidly changing uh and and gary just doesn't want that to to happen because he's stuck in this sort of a uh, fantasy of, of what life used to be like yeah um, yeah I, th- I, I, I think i think i do i do admire gary king's sort of journey through the film yeah it has a good start point a good end point and his his main motivation is just like I just don't want to live a boring life. Yeah. that That's his motivation, really. And I think that's something we can all relate to a bit. Oh, yeah. I think he's a really he's a really good, like, protagonist. I like it. I think he's my favourite character out of, the, out of the trilogy, to be honest. He's yeah, certainly, I think so, He's too. certainly the most layered, I think. Um, mm, mm. Which is funny, because it's like, it's a, it's a really... So much happens in the film, and like, if you just look at it at face value, it's a funny film about drinking and uh, the world ending. But there's so there's actually quite a good few layers tucked underneath it about sort of growing up and you know, um, uh, 
these sort of deep philosophical questions that we all have. It's like, what's the, why can't we all just have a good time? Why do we need to have boring, monotonous? Mon- I, I got that yeah. fucking word wrong again. It was the same as Doctor Who when we did. Uh, what is it? Monotonous. 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 Monotony. Monotony. Monotonous. Mon- monotonous. Fuck's sake! It was monotonous saying fucking monotonous. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound like a word anymore. <laughs> Reminds me of that bit in the in between us where Will is like, studying like really really hard, and uh, he's like he can't like recognise like words anymore. He's like, I mean, is this a word? Yes, council. Is it? It doesn't look right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a wee sidetrack. Uh, wh- what I did think was <laughs> what I did think was cool, or sort of more deepish, was the fact that there are twelve pubs, and there are twelve steps to alcoholic uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, and like, oh, by yeah. the end of the film, in a way, yeah. By the end of the film, Gary is sober and is just drinking water. Yeah, yeah. I never realised that, but that's a good point. There's there's that thing that that you mentioned, sweetie, about. All the sort of names of the pubs, the, the 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 iconography of the logos and stuff, it's all relevant to what happens in the pubs. I fucking love this. This is like my be- my favourite fact about this film. Mm. Like, the first post is the first pub that they go to. Mm-hmm. The All Familiar is the next one, and it's exactly like the first one. Mm. Um, like, The Mermaid is where um, they have the run-in with the marmalade sandwich. Yeah. And <laughs> the whole, like, mermaids being, like, sirens type things. Like, oh, draw- yeah, like drawing yeah. them yeah. in. Oh, that's um, so Holland clever. Wall is where Stephen crashes the car through the wall. Yeah, the the, um, the beehive, or is it the hive? It's like where they first sort of realise there's this hive mind of yeah, robots in the town. Yeah, I can't think what it is, but the um, logo for the pub is the four happy masks and the one sad one. Yeah. I, oh. I'm um, gonna I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna look up the list of pubs, right? Yeah, okay. please I'll... do. But the one with the four happy masks and the sad masks, Good that's Samaritan. the pub in which Oliver gets taken over by oh yes the yes yeah because and then it's the four remaining ones yeah. of them are and sad and he's happy yeah oh that's really good and that's the old familiar no no, no. It's not. oh no it's not um, oh my god oh jesus what is it what is it what is it what is it right the far, uh, first then, post uh, the old familiar yep uh the far the famous cock obviously gary oh yeah gary king gets recognized in that yeah. one yeah yeah, that's yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's so clever. Um, meet your forty plus match. What? Kind of email list have you been subscribing? Jesus to, Christ! Eh? <laughs> two seconds, two seconds. Back up, back up, back up. Uh, the cross hands. Yeah, that, that's where they have the fight in the bathroom. That's yes. right. Uh, the good companions. I think that's mm. the one with the masks. That's the one with the masks, yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, the trusty servant. I think that's where they run into... When Reverend they run into Green. Trevor, yeah. Or, yeah, Trevor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. By the way, as a bit of a side note on Trevor for a second, I, I, that's where I've always noticed in the film the really good atmospherics. Like, there's always a phone ringing in the background yeah. or a truck reversing. Like, in, in Trevor's little speech, there's a truck reversing. You can just hear in the background, beep, beep, you know, that classic sort yeah. of sound. Yeah. And it's sort of as though Trevor is, like, backing out of this advanced alien mm. civilization. And it's 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 just little things like that that I really like in this film. Yep. Uh, the two headed dog. That's an easy one. That's the the twins, isn't it's it? The twins. The twins. Yeah. 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 Uh, the mermaid, which is the the oh yeah, the, like the sirens, the yeah. the three girls drawing them in. Yeah. Yep. Uh, page three. Fucking hell. Uh, the bee. <laughs> the beehive. Uh, yes, that's where they. That's I think that's the one. That's the one where, where they run into Pierce Brosnan, isn't it? Yeah, it's and Pierce like, Brosnan's like, "There's a hive, mate." Yeah, and like they attack as though they're like a swarm. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, the king's head. Oh, oh I think what happens in that one. So I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna it, it says here this is the only pub on the list that I'm really not sure on. So little happens here other than a great subtle nod to the Shaun of the Dead's fruit machine that it's hard uh, to work out what the name refers to. Obviously, the king in the name is Gary King, but what is it yeah. about what is about Gary's head that the pub name refers what? to? My only guess it what could be Gary finally loses it. Maybe. What happens in that pub? Oops. I'm not sure. Um, bear with me, everyone. Uh, what do the pub names mean? Okie dokie. Um, 
first here we go first post cock oh next i think we're on the same website now dan That's, yeah have you met your 40 plus about? match yet lewis <laughs> um well according to these adverts has it gone uh i need to look at why christopher nolan is a nerd god wow and also i have an ad blocker installed um oh you've got anyway, such great ads <laughs> I have no idea what the king's head is. I can't think what happens there. Okay, yeah, well, we're not sure then, but... Yeah, maybe Gary loses it, maybe. You could sort of get that, I don't maybe. know. Uh, the hole in the wall. In his head to carry on. Yeah, that, yeah, that might be when he gets the idea. We've got to carry on anyway. Yeah. Hole in the wall is where Stephen crashes the car through the wall, obviously. Yep, and uh, the world's and then... end. Pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, and that's where the world ends. Yeah. 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 Isn't that just such a it's cool so Edgar Wright-ism? It's just it a is. nice little snips, this little crispity snap on top. It's I like it. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And I did enjoy Jim being a bartender. Oh, yes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Or whatever it was. Some delightfully fruity <laughs> notes that lingers on the tongue. Fuck's <laughs> I, I love... Uh, what, what, is the, what is the bit where... Uh, Oh, what's her character's name? I only I can only remember Gary's name and uh, is it Andy? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah Nick Frost. Yeah, it's hard to remember their names. Uh, the Rosamund Pike's character. Oh Sam. yeah, Sam. Sam, that's it. Uh, when she's like, asking what's going on, and Nick Frost is like, uh, basically, they don't know what we know, but they think they know what we know, and basically, no one has, no one has a better idea. So fuck it, and just smashes <laughs> smashes the window. Yeah, yeah, they're really good. I think it's, um, going it's... back again to me little audio bits. Um, when after after Robot Ollie gets replaced, um, yeah. sorry, normal Ollie gets replaced with Robot Ollie. I really enjoyed how from that point on, his audio is always very easy to pick out. His speech is easily louder than the rest of the music in the bar, even though the rest of them are struggling. And yeah. he, like, whistles with the drinks, and it's very loud, and they all turn their heads, and lots of things like this. Little sort of bits that I like. I, I agree. I think it's, there's so many cool little details that, that are just, like like the pub said, and, uh, the, the, the pub's names, and like what you said with the, with the noise... So sometimes you can hear just like a sort of almost like an artificial sort of to like on the end of of his of his speech, just at yeah, yeah, tiny like a little points. Sort of, um, yeah, like they hint, they hint it's... like so much in the film. They hint like Gary, like that Gary hurts himself as well because he seems to know like, about like, past trauma. He mentions he gives that line. Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah, bottling up uh, emotions can lead to bad ways to coping strategies or yeah, yeah something like that that's right and then that's like you know so that gives a a small little uh, hint mm. oh, oh, what was and I one say? thing i do find amazing about the characterization in this film gary has somehow scarred all of his friends yep isn't that kind of bizarre like like that bit they have in the smokehouse where um peter i ran over your leg uh, um you we were reenacting the knife game and you got stabbed in the finger what's the thing for um steven Stephen sat on a bottle. Stephen sat on a bottle. Yeah, but Gary pushed him onto the bottle. Uh, so then, he, he somehow he scarred all of his friends. Which is it's just it's a good thing. It's a good sort of characterization bit of like he has a destructive personality. That sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. I have a I have a potentially a very deep and serious question. Um, okay. Do you think that Gary uh, would have killed himself after the Golden Mile? Um. I don't think it would have been a direct result of the Golden Mile, but I could theoretically see it happening if he hadn't had this redemption arc. If he'd have just done the Golden Mile, everything had gone as normal, he'd still wake up the next day and still feel that feeling of like, yeah. oh, well, nothing's changed. Now I've finally done the Golden Mile. I'm just sort of here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because he says, you know, it's all I've got, and like once you've done the thing that you've got, or, or get rid of the thing you've only got, then, you know... And he, and we have proof that he hurts himself. Because um, mm, mm. so he has the bandages on his wrists and all that sort of stuff, doesn't he? Yeah, so if Andy hadn't stopped him and the, the world didn't end, obviously, then do you think he would have taken that very perhaps, dark choice? Perhaps, yeah. So that's why I think it's the mo- I think it's the deepest out of the out of the lot 
out of the, the lot of them. So mm, you, definitely. Which is which is pretty it's pretty mature, you know, because it's still absolutely hilarious, and like yeah, the, the yeah. See, the scene after you know we see Gary's like horrible, uh, you know, uh, his trauma sort of manifest and on 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 himself. They go down and then they have this this tiff with these, you know, these aliens <laughs> that, that control everything. And Gary just spends like five minutes just telling them to fuck off in really funny yeah. ways. So it's like it's, there's a good balance between comedy and, and uh, tragedy in this film. Mm-hmm. And that's some of my my favourite bits. Some of my favourite bits of dialogue come from that. When Gary's drunk, he's somehow much more eloquent than he ever could be sober. And like yep. um, that, that one bit that I, I always love, uh, to err is human. <laughs> so, uh, and I just really like that. That's fantastic. That's so clever. It's so fucking clever, isn't it? To err <laughs> is human. So... Uh, <laughs> that's just really good. That's so um, funny because it, it sort of it has this recursive meaning as well. It's like, well, to be stupid is human, but to to make mistakes to, is human. In that is what the sort of the original thing means. But then also to err is human. So uh, as in to to be not as clever as these other species you're quoting. That's a human trait. We're yeah. proud of it in a way. That's that thing. And by the way, the to err is human quote. When Nick Frost is telling the story in, like, post-apocalyptic London, or wherever he is, there's a bit where he takes his glasses off and he, like, cleans them and puts them back on. And behind him there's a train, and on the train, it's like a stationary train, on the train you can see someone's graffitied on the side, to err is human. That's right. And, and yeah, I just thought that was cool. That's but good... um, Also, that another part of that dialogue, haven't you marvelled about how technology has changed in the last 20 years? <laughs> Gary hasn't. Gary goes, no. But I think the reason he hasn't is because... He's still in the 90s. Have you seen his phone? Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Have you seen his phone? And then in, in the little flat that he's in at the start, he's, um, his, his, his TV is like a little cathode ray thing from like, do you know, like he hasn't, he genuinely just hasn't noticed that technology has changed. Yep. Everything is the 90s for him still. That is, that's, that's a nice little detail because it it's really funny. And then you think, oh, it's another symptom of his just refusal to, to you know, move on from, from, from mm, his mm. past. My favourite line though, has to be, why don't you just get back in your rocket and fuck off back to Legoland, you cunts? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it makes me, when, when Stephen comes down, he's like abseiling on the bunting, and they're all going, like cheering him on. And the, the lamp is trying to interrupt interrupt them. And it's like, you, it, you, it, you, and he can't get a word in. Yeah. It's really, it, 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 it sort of exemplifies this human sort of obliviousness and robustness in a way. I like the implication that the aliens have never seen anything like humans before. Yeah. Like, yeah. we are the science experiment gone wrong in the universe. <laughs> yeah. And it's looking at us like, what the fuck is this? It makes me smile because it makes me, it reminds me of that, um, I don't know if either of you have seen this, it's like kind of a meme, kind of a Tumblr thing. Um, humans are space orcs. Have you seen this? Have you seen this, Dan? No, I haven't. What, what's that in reference oh, well, to? I'll, well, a lot of it, it basically it revolves around the idea that a lot of sci-fi revolves around the idea that aliens are somehow superior to humans physically. Can they run faster, jump higher? Are they phys- Are they more intelligent? Whatever it might be. Yeah. But the um, the humans are space orcs idea. It presents the idea that humans. What if we are somehow much more robust than any other? species in the in the universe wow if other species are just more delicate they have to wear protective suits but we that they, they they are they watch us dive into water and like oh my god what's gonna oh you're fine that's really bit and yeah. then things like that that's the idea of humans are space orcs and it, th- this is what i get from this film is like all the other aliens in the galaxy that the big lamp has seen <laughs> is like um oh well um we're all really delicate and so we have to be peaceful but it's like no no humans we don't really give a shit we just want to go and get loaded and get have a good time whatever the quote is yeah we want to be free we want to be free to do what we want to do we've got we want to get loaded and we want to have a good time i think I, I, i think it's really depressing if we're the most if we're the superior species in the universe if, we, if we're as if we're as yeah. good yeah. as it gets, fucking hell! So <laughs> that is like that is like some toddler deity shit, you know? Dad, mm. daddy, look what I've made! Jesus Christ, son, that's shocking. What is that? 
Well, it's, I call them. I call them humans. They they can speak. They can talk. They can sometimes think. Um, yeah, they're 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 pretty impressive. Yeah, son, that is that is fucking disgusting. Bin that right now. Put it in the bin. No, so, I want so to they keep can't playing. Communicate telepathically. No, no, they can't. So what's the point in them existing then? Wait, what? Why is there? Wait, why are they arguing over? Oh, oh my god. Son, you need to bin that. You can't. You can. You don't let your mum see that. She'll go off her fucking nut. You can't see. <laughs> I think that'd be really fun if they, if they made a show or a film about that. Just this, this poor little toddler god has made these things that are so disgusting. And then by the end, it's like, yeah, yeah, they're human beings that he's made. <laughs> I think that'd be so funny. That would be good. You're right. It's a uh, well. The thing I do like about this film is that um, the characters come together to, 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 to triumph over adversity, and they do this by being in a team. And one could describe oh, this as an sake. intergalactic dream team! Fuck's sake. Okay. Sm- That's why they pay me the big bucks to, yeah. to come up with these fantastic things. Oh, yes, they do. Right, okay, let's do it. I've got, well, Chloe and I have collaboratively come up with one this week, and we're quite proud of it. Okay, right, hero one. I'd like to just just point out, I had nothing to do with the plan, I had only input on the team. So if there's any flaws with the plan, that's not on me. See, if any any characters from rom-com shop in this, I'm going to fucking scream, I tell you. You are going to be so proud of me, you're going to be so proud, Dan. Okay, okay, we'll see how it goes. Right. Okay, the team, it's a very flat team structure. There's no particular leader. They're all sort of equals in this goal. Right, okay. Okay, there is Sideshow Bob from The Simpsons. Hmm, interesting. Okay, yep. There's Feathers McGraw from Wallace and Gromit, The Wrong Trousers. Uh, I'm not entirely sure who that is, but okay. Feathers McGraw is the superior villain of all time. Essentially... If you need, let me give you the rundown of Wallace and Gromit the wrong trousers real quick. Basically, uh, in order to make some more money, Wallace and Gromit decide to let out a room in their house. There's this penguin that moves into their house, and it turns out he's a bank robber. And so right. he tries to rob a bank. But, like, genuinely, he is the most terrifying villain you will ever see in all of fiction. More terrifying than, like, more ter- terrifying, cold, calculating than, like, Hannibal Lecter. Anybody else is wow. umbrage is terrifying. I think I think you said this last last week. I think I think we mentioned this at some mm. point. It's all come back. He to is me the now. superior villain of everything. He's he's fantastic. Okay, fair enough. Okay, uh, number three is Doctor Octopus from Marvel Comics. Okay, not the films. Um, well, he's not really in the MCU. Well, he's in the Sam Raimi films. Oh, okay, yeah, that guy from the Sam Raimi films. Then he'll do. Okay. Um, number four. Have you ever seen the film Air Force One? Eh, uh, I, I think so. Well, it's a classic action film. If you ha- if you if you figure out you haven't seen it, it's worth a watch. We love it. Um, we want the president from Air Force One, who is is called President James Marshall, and he's played by Harrison Ford. And he is kick-ass. He's super duper kick-ass. Oh, shit, I think I yeah, I think I remember that. Okay, the president. What's his name again? President James Marshall. James Marshall. Okay. And number five is Rosa Diaz from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Oh, you've got her, Rosa. <laughs> you do. This is true. Yeah, the big bad is fucked, whoever he is. Or she. The big bad is Roger from American Dad. <gasps> oh! Oh! <laughs> Roger from American Dad, his entire... Well, I'm going to have to tell you the ship before I tell you his goal, otherwise it won't make sense. Okay. Actually, tell the goal first, (laughs) just to confuse him. Okay. The goal is he's trying to have sex with Leonardo DiCaprio. Okay. (laughs) And that's... (laughs) And that's inherently villainous because... That's inherently villainous because the ship is the Titanic. Kate Winslet <laughs> and Leo DiCaprio are there, and um, Roger is trying to destroy Kate Winslet's life and sleep with Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> okay. I'm ve- I am very curious <laughs> to see where this okay. goes. 
This plan is entirely me, and I will accept zero <laughs> criticism. Um, okay. Sideshow Bob and Feathers McGraw team up to make a trap for Roger to fall into. It's a very basic type of thing. as like sticks over a hole, that kind of a thing. Roger falls in. Wait, wait, and, wait, wait, um, wait, 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 wait. wait a minute, wait a minute. On the Titanic. Yeah, they saw a hole in the deck. Wait, and they, then they put Roger some... walking <laughs> over it to get to DiCaprio. Wait a minute. They put some sticks on a ship and Roger didn't think, why is there some sticks covering what looks to be a hole here? Maybe in the forest. Okay, it's, okay, okay, okay. They take out the, some deck plates, they saw a hole, and then they put it back in place, but very precariously, and then Roger walks over it and falls through down into a, the room underneath. Okay, right. And then when when Roger's in the room, Doc Ock uses his arms to, like, like a straitjacket to restrain Roger. Yep. And then President James Marshall takes them all down to a loading hatch on the back of the Titanic uh-huh. and says... In, in true Air Force One fashion, get off my boat! And then snaps Roger's neck and kicks him out of the loading door on the back of the ship into the ocean. Okay. And then when the ship inevitably crashes into an iceberg, Rosa Diaz uses her gymnastic skill, her gymnastics and yoga skills to get both Kate and Leo on the door that they're floating on. She then uses her medical training to make sure that neither of them get hypothermia in the very cold Atlantic. How how does she not get hyperthermia? Because she's about to leave, so what? she gets onto what are they Doc leaving Ock, on? Who has a flotation device on his? Get ready for this. Doc Ock has a flotation device within his his legs. No, he doesn't. His arms. His octopus. In my in my version, he does. No, no, not and, you. Uh, you said the Sam Raimi film version. He doesn't have that in that. Okay, well, Doc Ock spins his arms incredibly quickly, <laughs> like a propeller. <laughs> So, and he flies so away like a hovercraft <laughs> and then they all stand on Doc Ock's belly and they float what? away like a hovercraft to America they all stand on his belly <laughs> well some of them on his, on his chest and or face <laughs> Doc Ock dies as a, resu- as a result <laughs> with the weight of four other people <laughs> <laughs> The wings can take the, the 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 legs can take some weight, I think. Okay, so you're telling me, wait a minute, how does that even work? They can't spin. <laughs> they can't spin. Yeah, they can. No, they can't. Not in the not in the Sam was... Raimi version. They're not like they're they're actually like, attached into his spine. So if you're okay, spinning, what, what Doc Ock if does you're spinning the legs, is... you're spinning his spine. What Doc Ock does is he's lying on his back in the ocean, right? <laughs> Okay. And um and, and he the, uses two of his legs. And then the arms short to, um, circuit and he gets electrocuted. Uh no, because they're <laughs> waterproofed. Oh are they? Right, okay. Yep. They are, yes. Did you not did you not see that part where he said, Oh, Octavius, what are you doing? And he said, Oh, I'm waterproofing these these mechanical <laughs> arms that are attached to my spine. Um just in case, you know, just in case I need to kill Leonardo DiCaprio kill Roger from American Dad at some point. Jesus Christ. And um <laughs> Then he, he uses two of them, one to pick up James Marshall, one to pick up Rosa Diaz, and then Sideshow Bob stands on his belly, holding Feathers McGraw in his arms. Yep. Then Dr. Octopus uses the other two remaining arms from his back to do an impromptu backstroke-style <laughs> swing technique, but very, very quickly because <laughs> they're mechanical, and he goes, <laughs> all the way back to America. Like a yeah, like a, like a shit steamboat. <laughs> Wait a minute. The Titanic left from Be- didn't it leave from Belfast? Yeah, it was Belfast no, it was to America. Oh, Southampton to America. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, where about where do, whereabouts did the Titanic crash? Somewhere in the Atlantic. Yeah, closer to New York than. Yeah, much right. closer to New York than 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 the UK. And how long does it take them to get back? I'm not sure. He's got. Weather conditions. Yeah, it depends on weather conditions, the ambient knottage of the water. Wind. The wind. Wow. Wow. Got to factor in the wind, Dan. Come on. Wind wind is everything. Wind is everything. Okay. So so now the door that they're on is suddenly big enough for both of them? Well, it was big enough for both of them at the time. Well... If you take screenshots of the film and then use Photoshop, you can very easily fit them on. Yeah, but... Rose was a selfish boot, so she just let him freeze. 
Rose's character flaws are her own business. <laughs> seeing Roger trying to... Seeing Roger trying to sleep with her man made her realise how much of a bitch she was being, and she was like, okay, well, I've been like... Oh, like, yeah. 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 Like, yeah. He's like a yeah. fucking alien. So. The, yeah. the Titanic crashing wouldn't do that. It took a, a grey <laughs> alien... <laughs> It's a very shallow person. For her to say, oh, very right, shallow. I better take this relationship seriously now before the Titanic bitch, bitch even... needs to get her priorities in order. <laughs> she How, does. But do they even see... She doesn't even see Roger. Roger's, like, put in a hole like, before he can do anything. Well, no, she sees him approaching Leo DiCaprio, who stood at the head of the boat. And and, and the, um, and like the immediate assumption she man. makes is, oh, he's clearly here to have sex with my... With my uh, <laughs> <laughs> with the person that I love, not to invade yes, his... Yes, Roger. Yes. <laughs> that is a very yeah, but Roger she hasn't. trait. She hasn't. Yes, but Roger often often utters a stream of consciousness out of his mouth. Just Wait, no, okay, like, okay, so... I wonder so what, he, what they're doing over there. He's, he's like he's, got his binoculars or whatever. <laughs> sorry, so he's walking towards them and going, I'm going to sleep with Leonardo DiCaprio. That's, that's what... And, yes, and then she's yes, like, he is. And then she's yes. like, who's Leonardo DiCaprio? I only know a guy called Jack. <laughs> who's... <laughs> <laughs> this this uh, this plan seems uh, uh, <laughs> watertight. Watertight. Um, yes, watertight. Which is like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, that was that was shocking. Um, it was probably, I'll have you know it was beautiful. It was it was it was uh, it was disgusting, to be honest. It was um, <laughs> it was the most ridiculous plan I've ever heard. <laughs> oh God! How does Roger get to the Titan? Where does he have a time machine? Roger can travel faster than light, which means that he can time travel. Oh my God! <laughs> what? Plus. American Dad and Family Guy take place in the same universe, so uh, Roger could go to Quahog and okay. get in Stewie's time machine. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, so, so all these characters were snuck on board the Titanic before it left. Yes. Yes. And waited until it was ready to crash before intervening. Yes. Why? Because they were all taking a nap. And then they, one of them woke up, probably Rosa, woke up and went, oh, shit, it's about to crash. Everybody, everybody, everybody. And then they went and did it. The biggest thing about time travel is that you don't fuck with the past. So if, if they stopped it from crashing. Yeah, that's true. Okay, that's... F- butterfly that... effect, Dan. Butterfly effect. I didn't, I, but I didn't say that they had to stop it from crashing. But they could have stopped Roger <laughs> like, before it, it, it was about to crash, surely. Um, yeah. But then they waited until the crash Why? to save both Leo and Kate. Because they, they were emotionally invested in, in Leo and Kate. Right. Oh, yeah, that's that's fair enough. Um, so rather than just making sure that they got on a lifeboat together, just like, just pushing all the other guards out the way and just putting them on it and then sailing them off, you waited until yeah. the the boat was sinking and the, the same door that... that that Rose refused to give up in the original timeline because because that's what upper class people do apparently. <laughs> um, <laughs> you you're ki- and did Rosa say, "Listen, you, 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 you dick, if you yes. l- leave him to die, I'll come back and kill you." Is that what she is? Is Rosa threatening Rose uh, to to um, make sure that she doesn't let Jack die? Y- yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, f- fair enough. Flawless. Flawless. <laughs> Glad you like that one. It's one of my one of our best. I think, isn't it, sweetie? It is. Wow. I'm definitely not forgetting next week. <laughs> <laughs> I need to. I need to do. Oh God. I've got. I'm sure. I'm. I'm hoping that I've got something a bit, a bit more cohesive. Than that. What a ridiculous plan. Yeah. It's impossible right. to get more cohesive. Come on now. Roger's motivations are so stupid. <laughs> That's what they are in American Dad, though. Roger's motivations are always stupid. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. What is it? What would he have done to Kate Winslet? Would he have killed her? Yes, hundred percent. So he wanted to Snapped kill her. Snapped her neck, thrown her overboard. That's that's the kind of thing he would have done, I think. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Wow. 
Um, Jeez, oh. Uh, something, something, something. Segue. The world's end! Hey! <laughs> yeah. Right. I've got one that I quite like. Go There's on. a thing that um, at the service station, um, they say, oh, what are you doing now, Peter? And Peter goes, oh, I'm a partner at my dad's firm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, then when they're having the fight in the toilets in the pub, he goes, uh-huh. I'm a junior partner and, I, partner and I could lose my job or whatever it is. So it's like he's he's lying and accentuating, which is quite interesting. Yeah. So like, all the characters, like, they, they all sort of judge Gary for like, lying but they all have like, a lie that they want concealed. Like, uh, Andy doesn't say anything about his wife. Um, uh, what's his name? The guy that loves Sam doesn't say he loves Sam. Oh, Stephen. Paddy Considine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. S- Stephen says he doesn't... And who else? Who else? Who else? The junior partner thing. And Martin... What Peter. about Martin Freeman? Yeah, Peter. Uh, Martin Freeman... Uh, Oh, Mark, he covered his 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 birthmark thing. Yeah, he covered up his birthmark because he's ashamed of. So they they've all got a sort of, a uh, sort of, flaw that they've wanted to get rid of or hide, or conceal in some way. So they're not all. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's not just Gary who's got the, the problems, which makes it a bit more sort of you know. Relatable in a way. Everybody's yeah. got something that they're a bit embarrassed about, or yeah. Yeah, I like that. That's nice. Hmm. Mm. Um, Have you got any 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 worthwhile notes left, Cocker? Eh. Uh, I love that the trilogy itself like, rails against like insurmountable odds, like all the ta- like, every single one. Like, Hot Fuzz was against a, a death cult that controlled the entire village. Eh. Uh, Shaun of the Dead was a zombie apocalypse. And yet, somehow, they managed to survive that. Um, and this one, the world ends. <laughs> and, and, you know, yeah, yeah. the characters end up where they're meant to be, which is pretty which is pretty cool. Mm. The, the char- I've got it written down here somewhere. The endings are all nice and satisfying. Peter, the, the like, actual real-life Peter, who had all those sort of emotional issues that he was struggling with, he... Um, he died, which isn't a satisfying ending in itself, but it's nice to see robot Peter goes and has the family and is happy and is somehow more fulfilled than human Peter was. Yeah. More happy being a parent than, than human Peter was. Yeah. And, uh, old man, uh, had a new birthmark, which was half his head missing. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a birthmark, but yes, yeah, you're, you're right. A birth, a birth scar or, uh, a uh, birth, half your head's missing. <laughs> That's probably yeah, so, quite offensive, so, isn't it? Well, it's, it's not fucking real, Lewis. It's a film. Oh, yeah, he is a robot. This is true. Yeah. Well, don't... We're, we're not like those clear uh, uh, sort of reference to like, skinheads at the end of the film. We're like, like no blanks. Yeah, yeah. It's like, funny how like, when the world ends, there's still room for incredible human oh, God, ignorance. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I didn't even I didn't even put together the skinhead. Yeah, I didn't the, even. It's like oh no my god, bla- that's insane! Yeah, no blanks, and Gary just like a fucking legend walks in with his crew, and it's just like you will serve us, bitches. I think <laughs> that. Do you know? I would pay to see a TV show about what what goes on in the apocalypse after <laughs> after the world. It would be end. pretty good, wouldn't it? That'd be even so good. Even if it was good. just like sort of a limited order, limited series, like six episodes or something. Do you know what I mean? I would really enjoy that. I certainly would as well. I Where would. are they now? Type thing is Ollie still selling houses as a robot with half his head missing? Yeah, uh, that, that I would really enjoy it. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I think I might have run out of notes now, Cocker. I I think I have as well. Um. I see. Have you got a cheeky closing statement? Oh, oh yeah. No wait. I've just got this one last statement. Uh. Yeah. Sure. A bunch of drunks cause the end of the world. That's. That's a, it's just fucking hilarious. <laughs> in a strange way, I suppose it's, it is, yeah. It's, it's not due to some global conflict. It's not due to huge, big superpowers, you know, colliding with each other. Or some kind it's of, a, yeah, yeah. It's a bunch of damaged drunks <laughs> who just wind up there by, by accident and just, just destroy the world, essentially, which is... Yeah, because essentially they destroy the world by accident as well. Yeah! 
if the world ended right now mm. and someone came to me and and like they're like oh yeah it was aliens like a meteorite i'd be like well that fucking sucks but if, if someone came to me and said yeah a group of five middle-aged men <laughs> got pissed and just ruined your life i'd be like you know what that that's fucking fair that is you know what legends fair point <laughs> <laughs> i mean to be <laughs> fair if, if they didn't we'd all be lit lit a uh, part of the network that's true, which doesn't look like a very happy existence, does it? No. I mean, there's two people in the entire town. Well, three in the entire three town. Three if you count Mad were... Basil. Oh, Mad yeah. Basil. Yeah. yeah. I told you not to ask me that! Eh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, God. I... Anyway. Yeah. But, um, closing um, statements. Uh, yes. Certainly the most mature of the three films about dealing with the horrendous changes the world thrusts on you. And how focusing on the past can doom you if you dwell on it too much. Uh, yes, indeed. Great characterization throughout, from a storytelling standpoint to a watchability standpoint. No lines are wasted in this film, and I'm consistently impressed. The cinematography, as with all Edgar Wright films, is brilliant, and I can watch this film again and again and again without getting tired of it. I like it! So do I, Chloe. I just think that, that we need to get in touch with Mr. Strudel and ask for crazy straws. Yeah. Oh, why do you think I drink out my crazy, crazy straw? Yeah. <laughs> oh, let's get on it. I told you not to ask that. Listening. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me what they do with the empties. Oh, why, what do they do with the empties? I told you not to ask <laughs> it's the equivalent of um, Harry did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire Dumbledore asked calmly but in the, in yep. the film he's like grabs Harry by the lapels and for- <laughs> shoves him up against him did you get one of the older students to do it for you you're absolutely sure <laughs> yes sir yes sir <laughs> Harry Potter yes sir yes sir yes sir yes yes sir yes sir yes sir yes the Goblet of Fire is an exceptionally powerful arbitrage. Only a successfully powerful wizard could have hoodwinked it. Well beyond the talents of a fourth year. Oh, it's, it's Karkaroff next, isn't it? Uh, yeah. You seem to have thought about this a lot. Mad-eye. You, you seem to have it was given this... It was once my this... job to think about this. <laughs> yeah. You seem to have given this a fair bit of thought. Mad-eye. Spitting everywhere. <laughs> Spitting everywhere. It was once my job to think about all... How, think, think the same as a dark wizard like you, Karkaroff. That doesn't help, Alistair! <laughs> let's, okay, let's just quote the entire fucking... Let's start from the beginning. The oh title God. sequence. <laughs> How do we all know that film so well? I know. It is the best one. This is true. Kill the spare! <laughs> I remember Baby Voldemort. Baby Voldemort. <laughs> baby, oh, baby, Voldemort. baby Voldemort. Kill the spare. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was um, great. It was a great podcast this week. Then they suddenly stopped and started quoting Harry Potter. Like, word <laughs> for word. <laughs> God. Oh God! Well, thank you very much for getting through this podcast. It was good up until we started talking about Harry Potter <laughs> incessantly. Um, yes, uh, we have Danny, shilling. Have we got to some do. shilling to do. We do, we do. Um, I am on Instagram at O'Hiram. I'm on Facebook at Daniel K Actor. I'm on Twitter at Kerzo Two Thousand. What are you on, Lewis? Uh, I am on Instagram at Lewis Brindley 4. I have a Twitter. No, I'm on Instagram at Lewis underscore Brindley. Come on, Lewis. I have, I have a Twitter called um, at Lewis Brindley 4. And my, I have a Facebook page, which is called Lewis Brindley. What about you, Chloe? Um, I'm just on Instagram at number 12 Crochet Avenue. That's my business account. Um, I don't do much on my personal one, so that's the only one that I advertise really do you want to do, you want to do a wee ad, do you want to do a wee improvised ad for it because we we do that every week but the, the owner is here herself to do it for us <gasps> you know how like when you write a cv it's like hell because you're sat there going oh yeah i'm so great and internally going oh my god this is horrible don't look at me that's how i feel now i see oh. well number 12 crochet avenue is a business run by my spectacular amazing beautiful wife okay. chloe she's an extremely good egg and she's sat here with us right now is that is that who that is <laughs> um she she crochets and she is 
insanely good at it. She's been crocheting while we've been sat here. Uh, it's a beautiful scarf, which is being made for Darius, who is one of our patrons on the podcast, um, which which is a nice segue into the patrons when we inevitably get around to that. But anyway, the Instagram, like she said, is at number 12 Crochet Avenue. Make sure to go and check it out. The feed is beautiful. Her, her work is beautiful. Go and go and take a look. Definitely. <laughs> um, we are also partnered uh, with another fantastic company, uh, Strudels. And uh, it is me that is editing this week. Uh, so if all goes well, you should be hearing them. No. Hey, Dan, uh, do you ever drink things? Um, no, actually, uh, I, I don't. Right, well, that's messed the ad up then, hasn't it? Oh, good grief. Well, if you're not a massive weirdo, then you might like to drink things from time to time. And sometimes you might even like to use a straw. Yeah, and there are lots of options available. I've got a metal one, and they come in plastic. Bad for the environment. Or paper. Falls apart immediately. Yep, which is why strudels are out there. Strudels are straws made out of pasta, and straight away both of those problems Lewis just said are solved. The pasta will decompose in a day after you throw it away, and they'll stay strong in your drink for at least an hour. Exactly. What's not to love? Plus, they're super convenient. Having a couple of them in the cupboard will mean you don't have to keep cleaning a metal straw every time you do the dishes. Indeed it will. Check them out today at strudels.co.uk. You will not regret it. Fantastic! Wow, Danny, I don't know how you could mess up the editing that badly and have wow. the have the have the have the ad read be slightly late. God, don't let. What don't is even the point him. of having you? Don't listen to him. He knows. He doesn't know what he's on about. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have sent like eighty texts, <laughs> Lewis. What? Okay, so it, I go on to Audacity, correct? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I press the on button on my computer. <laughs> Hi, Lewis. I'm at the national grid. How do I connect my computer to charge it? <laughs> um, we are hosted uh, by Podomatic. We're on Spotify. We're on Apple Podcasts. Uh, we have a YouTube channel. We're on Deezer. We have a PayPal uh, donate button. Uh, we are on Patreon. And we would like to take this opportunity to thank our wonderful patrons, Chloe, Darius, Sophie, Peter... And, of course, Aditya, thank you so much, yes. you good eggs, for supporting thank us. Thank you one and all. You are superb. That's that's patreon.com slash shouting into the void. We do some regular postings there. And you get access to the, the Patreon-only Discord, which is very cool. We do a lot of chatting there. It's a cool place to be. It certainly is. And uh, last but uh, not least, we do merchandise. Yes. Indeed we do. Yeah, we need to do an ad for that. We need to fucking get <laughs> on that. But, I mean... No, uh, I, yeah, we do, because because I can't remember what we actually have. We have like t-shirts, jumpers, mugs, socks, socks um, loads of stuff, loads but I can't of, remember the the intricate details. Loads of shit, loads of it. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, that's that's us, I think. Yeah, I, I also believe it is us. No, yeah. don't think you have cocker. Well, good. Well, yeah, um, this has been a superb podcast. It certainly has. Um. Well, next week, uh, wait a minute. Did you say? Did you <laughs> no, say? No, no, thir- no. Did you, you said thirty-eight? Didn't you? Episode thirty-eight. Uh, yeah, this is episode thirty-eight. Yeah, I thought you said thirty-seven. Never mind. Uh, but uh, next week is episode thirty-nine. If you can, if you can do maths, and um, we will be uh, reviewing, speaking about butchering, Shaun of the Dead, which Shaun is Shaun of the Dead. Yeah, which is the the uh, the middle child of the Cornetto trilogy, but the last that one the that we're one. doing was it? Yeah, Shaun of the Dead was the first one. Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, World's End. Don't listen to me. I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> it's, okay. it's okay. Idiots are us. That's what the podcast should be called, really. Well, you know, it's human stupidity is what is what a uh, Gary King's proud of. So there you go. Well, to her is human, so. The Shaun of the Dead uh, is the middle of the trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, um, so, <laughs> yes. I better just... Wait, wait. I better just... There we go. Just get another wee use out of that before I have to put it back <laughs> in this box. <laughs> you need to uh, make a supercut of all the times you use it and then send that to your accountant so they can, so you can say, yeah, I, this yeah. is why I bought that wood glue. It's yeah. a business expense. Yeah, I'll, I use it. I use it all the time. Listen, listen. 
at random points that, that have nothing to do with what's going on in the in the uh, okay um so thank you so much <laughs> for listening uh, to this podcast uh, we will hear you smell you lick you fight you uh, invade you uh, uh, zombie apocalypse you uh, <laughs> uh, create a death cult and kill people for really small reasons you <laughs> uh, <sighs> see you next week yeah see you, see you next thank week. you for listening <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about I don't know Order of the Phoenix next week we'll start quoting that yes. word for word I told you not to ask that <laughs> <laughs> thank you for watching bye, bye.